What happens when you put a magnet underneath a seedling? Well, you might be surprised at the results because I sure was. I have been doing a little bit of research recently into electroculture, magnet, magnetoculture, using magnets and electric fields around your plants. And I have come across some really amazing, very interesting things. The first person I came across was a guy called Yannick Van Dorn and he is a French guy. I think most of his information is in French. He is an engineer and he has spent, I want to say like 15 years uh, looking into and experimenting with these things. And he has come up with some methods that actually really do work. And he's really good at showing the results of his experiments. So I'll put a link to his YouTube channel down below. The next person I came across was an interview with a guy called John Burke and he is a scientist. He was was actually employed by a large seed company to come up with some kind of magnetic electric field um, generating machine for them to expose their seeds to before they plant them out and as soon as I heard that I thought hmm well if the scientific community is actually coming up with and designing these machines they're there's got to be a reason for it, right? And the other interesting thing I found with him was because he's a scientist and he's got all these machines that can record all these fields, his friend got into looking into some of those big megalithic sort of stone structures. Um, there's also smaller ones like the dolmens. They all sort of fit into this group. He started taking his machines to read the electric fields and stuff to these places and what he found was a lot of them are places where the natural geology or where they've moved stones to is concentrating those natural electromagnetic fields and often concentrating them right down into a really specific place and interesting a lot of the traditional cultures will bring their seeds and leave them in that really specific place often overnight usually for some kind of set period and then they would come and take them back home to sew them. Now there seems to be a thought that people back in the day were idiots and they just did weird stuff. But I think we need to give them credit where credit is due. They're humans and they're not going to be wasting their time if there's not going to be some kind of payoff. And then I've also come across a couple of other YouTube videos where people expose seeds either before sewing them to a magnetic field or while they're actually germinating. All of them are done in the Northern Hemisphere and we live in the Southern Hemisphere. So I really wanted to see if there was any difference doing it down here and actually I just wanted to see the results with my own eyes so what I did I have these tick beans that I saved some from some plants they're kind of very similar to is it a fava bean we call them broad beans but they're quite little and I've got all these seeds so I thought beans would be something that will germinate quite quickly especially if I do it in the house and the other thing I needed was some of these magnets now these magnets are super cheap they're nothing fancy I think I got this whole big I think it's a hundred that I got for like $17 and what you need to know is whether it's the north side or the south side of these magnets and to do that you just need a compass the north pointing end of the compass will point to the south end of a magnet so all I did was held the compass up and put the magnet next to it and if the north side pointed to it then I knew that was the south side of the magnet so I marked that with a white dot traditionally the south side will be marked white and the north side you would mark red but I didn't have a red paint pen so I just marked the white dots so the first group has got a control and then the other two I set the 10 bean seeds on top of a magnet one facing north up and one facing south up and I just did this overnight the control group had no magnet and then in the other three cups I again have a control and I have one lot that is south side up that the magnet's going to stay in there for the entire experiment and the other one that is north side up that the magnet will stay in there for the entire experiment and then I wrapped the bean seeds in some damp paper towels and I let the experiment start. Now obviously in the morning of day one I then got the exposed seeds, took the magnets away and wrapped them in damp paper towels. The second group they were just wrapped in damp paper towels and everybody was set up on the shelf in my living room. They're far enough away that the magnets in theory shouldn't affect each other and it's nice and warm up there and hopefully I won't forget about them. And the next day the results were starting to speak for themselves. The seeds with the south up facing magnet, both the ones that had been exposed overnight and the magnet was taken away, as well as those that had the magnet underneath, they had started sprouting. A couple in the control groups had started sprouting as well and not really anything in the north groups. By day three, it is significantly more obvious that the south side up seeds have sprouted significantly more. Control. 
So which one? These are just a control. Yeah, these ones are north up. So they're pretty similar. In fact, they're yeah. probably slightly behind those. Cause but then got a thing. more of these feel like they've sprouted. Because some of these... Well, that one's a bit of a dud. But it seems like a... But like that one has an and then... And then... Oh, wow. Oh. It's significantly better. Yeah. It's starting to become obvious that the north side up magnet are actually doing slightly worse than the control. Whoa! Wow, the humongous jerk control. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Wowza. Wow. Humongous. So, uh, these ones are gone slimy. Just these, these ones, ones are like late. way further ahead. These ones are doing, still doing way better than those ones. Yeah. Now I actually ended this experiment on day four because the results were so striking and so obvious that by then I was pretty much sold on the whole concept. The south side up magnet that was left with the seeds definitely did best. The next best would have been the one that was only exposed for 12 hours overnight, south side up. They did second best. And then coming in third and fourth were the control group where they had no magnets at all. And then coming in last were the ones that were exposed to north side up magnets. Now, I genuinely thought, given that we're in the southern hemisphere, that maybe this would be the opposite. But no, these results reflect the experiments that I have seen in the northern hemisphere. They have all said south side up magnets and it doesn't seem to matter too much whether you leave them in there or whether you just expose them. And it does seem that the stronger the magnet, the shorter you can expose them. So where to from here? Well, the next thing I want to try is get, you can get those big sheet magnets that they cut up and put, make the magnets that you'd put on your fridge out of. And I'm pretty sure they will definitely have a south side and a north side on the flat sides of those. So when I've saved up some coins, I want to get a couple of those and try germinating like a whole tray of seeds on top of them. And in the meantime, I'm going to try and hot glue some of these magnets onto just maybe a laminated piece of card and put them in under some of my germinated seeds as well as they're germinating and try and grow them under there and see how that goes. If you are trying to grow seedlings at the moment, check out this video here for my other top tips on how to get the very best transplants. Thanks for joining me. I hope you found this video really helpful. I will see you in the next one.